Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are sharing with you a story of coexistence between people, ecology, and culture. The story happens in the area around the Stony Creek. Our members are Wang Yuhen, Duan Jiande, Han Jun, Xu Yao. This is our acknowledgement of past and future to future traditional custodians and Aboriginal. Our study area is centered uh, on the Stony Creek Commons and the area surrounding the Stony Creek. To begin with, we are con concerned with nature. The nature is an inseparable entity and the river is the life of the city. And in the past, many indigenous were born around it. In many places, river were even called the mothers. However, the Stony Creek is disconnected in the upper part of the Jilong Road. And the varying degrees of attachment between people and ecology in different areas have created many splits throughout the creek. In particular, the part of of the Jurong Road is still to be planned. Therefore, Stony Creek Common is, is the place where the connection between the two is made a potential for restoring the ecology and culture of Stony Creek in its entirety. But this doesn't mean that the whole area will be complete once Stony Creek Commons has been well built. Instead, it requires continuous design and improvement and individual nodes so that the whole place is linked together. The left demographic structure indicates that most of the residents in the late streets are couples with children. And therefore the education of children is a major concern in our subsequent analysis. The right graph shows the rapidly increasing future population of our study area, which means that more planned open space is needed in this area. The framework of the project focuses on the inter interaction between people and ecology. Also, the coexistence between humans and nature is the core of our project. For a human aspect, we focus on the indigenous culture. By valuing the historical context of the land, we can establish a connection between people and place. So how do we reach it? Through well-designed transport and mobility, people are attracted to the site. Then a series of step-by-step -step intervention activities are used to bridge the intangible gap between people and place. Firstly, I will introduce the issue and the opportunity of the species of tiger snake. This map shows the record of occurrence of tiger snake in the target site. We can find that there is a sign of rhythm of snake in the last few years. According to the research, tiger snake is native species in Australia this species is often associated with watery environments. Moreover, snake in the Aboriginal traditions has important meanings based on story of dream time. In terms of issue, tiger snakes used to be abandoned throughout their range in Australia. However, as urbanizations expand, there is a decline in the number of these species. The lack of nature habitat for snakes to live in the urban environment with human residents. However, human residents have whispered fear of snakes in the city. They are concerned about their safety issue and well-being. Multi-species interaction are not always pleasant. There are also the possibilities for human wildlife conflicts. Regarding the opportunities, firstly, cities are recognized as hotspots for biodiversity. It's important sites for endangered species. Thus, urban greening interventions provide benefits for non-humans and humans alike. Secondly, as an umbrella species, snakes perform an important function of controlling rodent population and keep ecological balance. Therefore, we need to change human perspective of snake and to achieve human-snake coexistence based on protective, preventive, and participatory interventions. The next issue is about indigenous cultural representation. Aboriginal people have lived in the Maribino River Valley for at least 40,000 years. The site we focused on is built on the land of Bermudron Group. There is no writing language for Australian Aboriginal people. So they use artistic designs and symbol icons to convey stories and messages which are incredibly important in their culture. Most of the symbols are uh, relatively, relatively simple, but to tell a more complex story through elaborate combinations. 
In terms of problems, firstly, as can be seen from the maps, the indigenous population has significantly decreased. Next, our set is covered by the areas of cultural heritage sensitivity. It means that some land use and development activities are more likely to harm Aboriginal cultural heritage when carried out in these areas. Then, at present, Aboriginal culture is well documented, but lacks a place for its exhibition, display, experience, and education. Regarding opportunities, Indigenous cultures are highly valued and supported in the American 2040 Community Plan. Besides, the dreaming stories of Aboriginal peoples can be a great approach in sharing and teaching Aboriginal perspectives. For example, they can be used to explore biological features and adaptation of native species. In addition, the Bunurong Foundation offers a range of services as a part of our cultural heritage education and sharing aim. This organization will provide more possibilities for art design interventions and activities. In terms of the transport and mobility, the main problem in the network system is the lack of accessible links throughout the Stony Creek and adjacent open space. Whether it's an inadequate trail or a disjointed cycling route, these obstacles limit the scope for human interaction with the place. So why is the safe walking and cycling connection so valuable? This survey on the left shows that the most popular open spaces are mainly in the lower part of the Jilong Road. Also, these activities in the middle are the most popular with the local community. So that is the rationale for the design of the safe walking and cycling connection. In addition, the the diagram on the right shows the four most important safety concerns, such as lighting and passive surveillance, as well as the traffic movement. Therefore, by improving the accessibility of the trails, the greenery and the street lighting, we have increased the wellness and safety of people to visit. The next step is to make cyclists cross the road safely with prominent road markings and well route design. All this planning and design is intended to connect all the nodes and to extend the educational dimension of culture and ecological. The overall design promotes both up and downstream biodiversity and coherence as well. The possibility of creating a deeper sense of place and belonging is also developed. We design three methods of community engagement interactive mapping, idea wall, and the service to understand the community's needs and aspirations for future development. The keywords mentioned by the participants are presented in the forms of word cloud. These outcomes are essential for our community vision and the key values of our place. Here, our vision is developed based on issue opportunity analysis and community engagement. We will achieve an ecological friendly space to support the health and well being of humans and non human biodiversity. Secondly, we will achieve a connected space to integrate a safe, sustainable, and effective transport network. We will also achieve a respectful and vibrant space to celebrate heritage significance and recognize the value of indigenous culture. We therefore recognize the value of place as accessible, stewardship, safety, inclusive, storytelling, and collaborative. This is our map of connection. It demonstrates a range of interventions based on vision and the place value. We will propose a new green space and wetland for tiger snake near Duke Street due to the safe distance to the human dominated areas. The goal is to achieve human nature coexisting. The main approach is education, and the target group is young generations and their family. Therefore, we will have, for example, set QR code along the creek for visitors. We also have point-to-point -point trail, create a continuous open space corridor with improved connectivity and safety. Secondly, a rainbow suburb bridge which is to achieve a suburb place to see the site in an indigenous con context. And we also have rainbow suburb playground and mazecape, 
which is to use creative and innovative way to inspire children and expand their natural play opportunities. Last but not least, an original art projection, which is to create a range of cultural display based on nature and storytelling to celebrate the culture and the history of Aboriginal people. I'm going to choose the implementation of frameworks for projects. This is the answer reading in the week 10. Dutchess believes that the framework consists of the five parts, which is the stakeholders, governance, resources, timeline, and maintenance. The first is the stakeholders. We have divided the stakeholder into the four groups. This is on the level of the stake and the references to the site. And it is clear that the government acts as the leader for the project and the residents are the clients. So how is involved the stakeholders in the project, which brings us to governance? The plan involves the active the participation of the government, the team of the consultants and design the platforms to the brainstorm's idea to discuss the project over and over again and finally allow the residents to maintain it. So how is the whole the project funded? We can call it resources. There are two main components here. First is council and other funding, for example, the rates and the grades. Second, the site itself generates some incomes. It is a place of contribution. Finally, there is the timeline and the maintenance. We have divided all the projects into the four priorities, and all the projects will be completed within the two years. In addition, uh, maintenance parts require the, the tripartite efforts between the residents, the council, and the indigenous foundation. This evaluation can help we collect feedback from the community and other stakeholders. Based on the value cards and expected benefit from projects, both qualitative indicators and quantitative indicators are defined. Different indicators will be assessed using different methods, which is also a process of public participation. That's all. Thanks for your listening.